and the smaller number of, of students that there are in the school. Um, I know Anchorage has an issue, yeah. Fairbanks has a couple as well, where we have schools that are half full. It almost makes it more advantageous to keep both schools open. Mm -hmm. What this would do is that they consolidate the schools together for the th next three years, they would get the same amount of funding as if both schools were done underneath the old formula, and then they would go back to what the current formula has. It's, it's just to encourage, um, not just keeping buildings open for the formula portion of it, but what's better for students. Great, thank you. A second question, uh, there's some question about the funding for the, uh, the Medicaid uh, supplemental, and that was in the, was it in the fast track budget it was taken out, or do you know where that is now? So it's in the, the supplemental, $90 million is in the supplemental. No, it is not in the fast track supplemental. We have been notified by um, Health and Social Services that there could be an issue um, whether or not we'll have enough money you know, to get to the 90-day session. It looks like we do 90 days, but if we were to extend, they would run out about that time and not be able to pay providers. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not currently in the fast track. I am hoping since they all of a sudden decide to slow down the budget, that maybe we could take some time this week or even early next week and bring in health and social services and find out whether or not that they are running out of money and how much they would need to make it to the regular supplemental or whether it needs to go in the fast track. But I just want to remind you, the fast track only gets done in the 90-day session. So it really doesn't help a whole lot as far as getting the money to them right now. Uh, just a follow-up. So where is it? Is it anywhere in any budget? Yes, it's in the, it's in the regular supplemental. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, Steve Quinn, KTVA News. Um, <clears throat> Representative Tallarico, you spoke of a plan, and the state is on the hook for almost a billion dollars to the oil companies. At some point, you'll have to repay the CBR. Um, are you confident, and uh, this is for anyone, that the legislature will come up with a plan that's durable? And by durable, I mean can withstand another downturn in oil prices. The state's been put on notice by Moody's. A, Another downgrade awaits if there is no plan that can withstand a downgrade or withstand a downturn. And I've got a follow-up. Well, I'm, I'm confident that, that we have a lot of ideas for sure. And, and every, everyone's got a lot of their own ideas for sure. I think we can come up with a plan. Um, we're, we're not the first state to face that question of durability for sure. You know, it's, it's, it, uh, and it's kind of tough. So I've I've got a tremendous amount of municipal experience, and uh, when I was when I was in municipal government, I created what I thought was an incredibly durable plan that lasted about eight, 18 months, and this was a 10-year plan. Um, so it's kind of hard to uh, to say that, and I don't think anyone would really necessarily guarantee you a durable plan. I think what we'll do is we'll put our best foot forward and put the put the best effort forward that we can. Currently, uh, I think things are looking up for us. I think we have a very bright future just because of production numbers and price numbers that I watch every day. But what, something that's been discussed, and I think everyone's looking into it and we need to, is, is the idea behind durability is probably diversification. And I think we seriously, over the next few years, have to look at how do we diversify our economy and not do – one of my concerns is you diversify the economy without doing damage to the private sector to keep investment and, and business opportunities at the forefront so that people have some confidence that they can come to Alaska and make their way in Alaska. And those that are here want to stay. So uh, durability is kind of a tough question. It's kind of like trying to describe the word sustainable. Um, as much as that's thrown around, uh, there are a lot of variations on sustainable, and I'm not too sure that we have very clear definition on that. At least I know that people that have described it to me, and this is just me talking, my idea is sustainable might not be exactly the same as someone else's, but uh, durability is, is always the question. We're, we're, we're not, I don't think we're in, in as bad a spot as, as some say, but we're, you know, we obviously we're working under deficit, and I think uh, there's still a lot of work to do. But, you know, step one has to be, can we even hold the line? I mean, in your own family, when you, you lose your job or, or you get a reduction of pay, you have to look closely and say, can I at least hold down my cost? And we're not even doing that. We finally had an opportunity the other day when we were looking at the governor's budget where we had $500,000 in a contingency fund, and it, it passed. And we took $150,000 out of that, and then suddenly it came back yesterday 
Um, I read down that they've never even used up to um, the 400000 which would still be in there. And I guess for me, even more frustrating is we, we saw a member walk on the vote. How can you not sit there and vote on, on something? And, and, you know, this is money we weren't even using, and they found themselves that they couldn't even cut that amount out. We've got to hold the line to start with as we're making more efficiencies, and that just doesn't seem to be part of any plan at this point. You spoke of uh, diversity. We've heard diversifying the economy. We've heard that an awful lot the last four years. Um, can you point to any area where those efforts have been made to diversify the economy? Well, I, th I think that we've uh, people have have discussed that certainly to diversify it. And I th I'm I'm a person who thinks that from a regulatory basis that we still have have some regulatory issues. Um, one of, one of the things is uh, basically the permit issue. You know, I've I've heard a lot about how the how how we're going to streamline that and uh, kind of a one size fits all. And uh, I'm just as guilty as anybody. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I would like to do that. Say, for example, when when you do go out, um, and and you want to uh, any anything that you want to do, and you want to use a piece of property, and you've got all these separate permits that that are required and and are are good for us because we protected ourselves very well. But uh, we don't have it. We don't necessarily have a one size fits all. We talk about a one size fits all, and one size fits all to me means one one application that covers at least our state agencies, and um, we haven't quite gotten there yet. But you know, we have a very resource rich state, and we haven't tapped all of those yet. And we, we I would be one who would choose to expand that. So, um, Steve, on that note, I mean, we we have an administration, a federal administration now that's really helping Alaska open up and, and grow our pie. And so I think that that's an opportunity for us as far as it goes with mining and oil and gas exploration, um, even our fisheries, that we have an opportunity to uh, take advantage of some of the positive things that have come out of Washington, D.C. for our state. Um, opening up land for exploration. We see that as all positive moves for the state of Alaska. So um, we also have Representative Newman that has talked extensively about diversification and ha had a whole plan in place for um, over in the in the, in the Matsu Valley. And so, you know, there are a lot of ideas out there to diversify, but again, you go back to the durability and the stability of our economy. That's something that we have to do so we can provide private sector to come into our state and want to invest in our state, and one of them is paying back our, our debts. Um, you go right to that, and um, so it, it, diversification also needs stability and also needs, you know, our state to make sure that we're paying back what we promised um, private sector when they came in to do business. Becky Bohr with AP. Um, there seems to be an agreement about um, permanent fund earnings being necessary, but how to do that. Do you and, and we've known this now for, for some time. Do you feel that where we stand today, we're actually any closer to implementing a POMV plan? Or do you think with the rhetoric and at least in the House House leadership and Senate leadership seeming to kind of, you know, digging in a little bit, do you it seems that the ninety day optimism is like sand <laughs> slipping away. Yeah, I think, you know, it's unfortunate. I, I still believe, I you know, I'm ever the optimist, but I still believe we can get out of here in 90 days. Um, we've shown um, the House Democrats that we're willing to work with them. We're willing to move legislation uh, fast across the floor. Um, we're, we're still pushing for the 90 days. As far as the um, structure, uh, restructure of the permanent fund or the 50-50 plan, you know, I, I think that as long as you're not tying it to one thing or the other and that we can secure a, a stable budget and um, continue to put the downward pressure on the budget, I, I have confidence that we can work together and come up with something. We all have different ideas and different views, so it's going to be a conversation we really need to have, but it needs to be a conversation that we can all... Um, you know, put our ideology aside and talk about what's best for the state of Alaska. Do I think we're any closer? Um, I don't think we're going to be any closer until the public understands what that means, until we really get the public's um, understanding and we have to restore trust in the public. You know, we, we need some downward pressure on the budget. We need a spending cap. We need a lot of things in place before I think we can convince the public that this is, this is the best thing for the state of Alaska. So the budget does have the POMV in it. 
Um, and again, they tie the POMV to the dividend and how much you get. Yeah. They are absolutely two different concepts. They are. The POMV, the percent of market value, really is a number saying how far can you stick your hand in the cookie jar. Really doesn't tie to the dividend. The dividend is a completely different um, conversation that we should be having. But the emails that I've been getting, they don't feel that the state has done their job as far as showing the reductions that they want to see before you keep taking their money. And I was very concerned when I heard the um, press availability from the majority saying if they can't get taxes, they're looking at taking the other half of people's dividend. Again, they're the ones that are increasing the budget. The only one decrease that we possibly had, it got overturned yesterday, and all we see is more money going into it. And where are they going to get it from? And we haven't heard any ideas on the economic growth portion of it of how we could get it in a different fashion. So, you know, you, you can't keep talking both directions that you want to see us have a plan without any kind of reduction. And right now, the, you know, luckily, we have a little bit more oil coming down. The price is a little bit better. But we are, we're a long ways away from that. And increasing the budget is not a way to be able to show that we're trying to do our part in this whole talk. Well, I was just going to say one, one thing that we haven't talked much about, but I hope that, uh, that we do... Um, realize that we still have nearly a billion dollars in tax credits sitting out there that we have to pay. Um, it's not something that we can just wish away. Um, and we've talked, there's, there's some ideas on bonds, um, but we know we have to pay those. And we know that the people operated in good faith. And if we're going to talk about diversity, diversifying, we can reduce regulation, we can do all these things. But if we're not going to work and hold true to our word, doesn't matter if it's corporately or with the public, we're, we're not establishing good, solid public and corporate trust. So um, I'm hoping to see some, some way that we can uh, face this head on. Uh, Steve Quinn of the KTVA. Representative Johnson, you touched on my question, the, um, the bond um, solution to the oil tax credits. I'd like either thoughts from you, Representative Tallarico, members of resources, any four, but still, on um, the governor's plan to pay those off. I, I'm sorry? The, the governor's plan to pay off the tax credits. I know the bill hasn't come before your committee yet, but um, if you've got any thoughts on it, I'm interested. Yes. Well, it will be heard in resources. We haven't heard it yet. Um, it's important, I think, that we don't um, – Force. We're not trying to force the companies into taking less money than they deserve or force them into uh, – the, the, we're not out to using this to force them or out to get them to um, totally reduce um, what their tax credit is going to be. Um, I think we have to make an honest effort to work with the companies, to work with industry. People that put their money out, especially the small companies, they do need to get their monies back, and we want to encourage um, investment. We want to see that investment come back into the state of Alaska. So I'm looking forward to hearing that, Bill. Um, I think there's some work to be done there. But, Joe, there's two parts to the conversation. So first of all, you have the formula that we've always followed, and it would have been approximately $206 million following the, for the formula that we've always had. And it just seems like this year it changed. So now we're looking at around $45, $46 million. And why is that important? Because the people who would have gotten it all the way up to $206 million, they're not going to get their tax credit money back. But yet we're going to tell them, on the other hand, if you'll go with the bonding portion of it and, and get 10% less than what you deserve, then we'll give it to you right now. That's not the way we do business. Again, we had them all in front of us just a couple years ago. And, and I was one of those that sat there and said, it was great when we could pay them in full, and now we can't. You'll have to wait your turn based on the formula, never thinking in a million years, all of a sudden they're going to change the formula so that they don't have to pay them. The timing is bad. The, the policy is wrong. And we have to take care of that part first in the budget before we can actually go to this bonding issue. Because I do think we need to, to pay as soon as we can. These are small companies. They're not the three large companies. And they went out there, took a risk, and now they could go out of business because we didn't keep our end. And it, thank you. And I, I think one of the most important things that I'm really looking for in that, and I'd like to hear from the people that uh, that may receive some of the benefits if we chose to go that way, is um, this is going to be instant capital. Um, and what will that do for us, really, as Alaskans? Will will that help bring some of the jobs back? Does that increase throughput? Does it increase investment? Does it increase exploration? 
in the state? Because I think that's critical. That's one of the things that we have to ask ourselves. You, you know, we know we've had that. Um, we've had job loss. Um, we're, I think we're at record highs right now for our unemployment and everything. So um, there's several things that are involved there. If that capital actually creates jobs, um, I'm, I'm all into putting people to work for sure. Um, so uh, we, we need to hear from folks about that, how that's all going to work out. What I've, what I've been told just briefly is uh, the state of Alaska is kind of a break-even proposition for us. Won't cost us any more, won't cost us any less. Um, I'll need more details, I'm sure, from the Department of Revenue um, to make sure that that's, that's at least the way I see it. And I'm, I'm no expert, I'm no economist, but I have a Casio calculator in my office. I'm pretty good <laughs> with numbers. But uh, I, I think what's really important there is, is, what is what is the actual benefit? You know, it's kind of been a, um, it's, it's been touted as a win-win-win for everybody. I think we need to investigate that when it does come before us and make sure that's what it is. And with that, we will uh, say thank you for being here and attending, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thanks.